It is the ultimate greed, the ultimate avarice, that the controllers understand what this species and this planet truly represents, the embryonic phase of our species, and that they would seek with chemicals and biologicals and radiologicals and television and media conditioning to dumb people down and to turn us against each other so that they can more easily manage our society. They have committed fundamental crimes, not just against races or groups, but against the human community itself. You look at all the different medical reports, all the mainline statistics, the male sperm count in Western Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Anglo-American arm of this system, and sperm counts are down by over 85%. Infertility and cancers amongst women are over 2,000% on average increases. They are killing us in our homes. They are killing us in our cities and our towns quietly, slowly. They are doing this. They have confused us and compartmentalized us to the point we don't realize it. Just search the term human DNA irrevocably damaged. They've already gone in with the mercury filled shots and the sodium fluoride in the water and the GMO foods and all the major studies and have already damaged the genetic code of this species to an incredibly dangerous level in their lust and their hatred of the general public. And the establishment themselves spends all their times only eating off organic farms, only drinking fluoridated water. Uh, they reportedly have all the cures to the binary weapon systems that they've released into our population. And it comes to that point of just realizing just how completely psychopathic and out of control these people are that you then realize that your individual life means absolutely nothing. I have no fear of being killed myself. I have no fear of being destroyed by the media. I have no fear of disease individually, but I have great fear of being killed and not being able to complete my mission of warning humanity of what's happening to our society and allowing these people to continue. But the good news is they can't kill a Dr. Stan Monteith or an Alex Jones or someone else because the idea, as I said earlier, is bulletproof. No yeah. army. No army can stop an idea whose time has come. Yeah. We have seen the type of society delivered by the globalists. We have seen what NAFTA and GATT and globalism has done. We have seen the hundreds of millions of deaths in the third world. We know it's a fraud, and the planet, as the Vigna Brzezinski warned his minions, is awakening to them. Just last November, they had the Copenhagen Denmark summit, and the media reported, don't worry, they're going to pass this Copenhagen Global Treaty. They're going to have the world population accept the carbon taxes on what humans exhale and plants live off of carbon dioxide because the third world has been promised all of this money and all of these taxes to lift their people up if they go along with it. Then the Danish released the text to the third world countries. And it stated that the taxes were a hair short of double on the third world what they would be on the West. It has been estimated to be a death sentence of at least one billion people within a decade if that program of soft kill eugenics is implemented and we must resist it. Yeah. Right, Alan. Remember, the globalists have created part goat, part spider creatures for more than 15 years to create body armor. They have created salmon that are part insect and other fish. They've created goats and cows and pigs that are part human for transplants. They've created thousands of different pharmacological crops that produce live HIV in the corn, protegene, a decade ago. They have engaged in unbelievable genetic mutilation, genetic vandalism against this planet. They have used depleted uranium by the tens of thousands of tons all over the world. That's a death sentence to the military that uses it and the populations they fire it on. They have engaged in unbelievable environmental degradation and the only reason they've gotten away with it 
is because they sit up there and pose as the environmental leaders telling you, don't worry about DU, don't worry about toxic waste, don't worry about cutting down trees, worry about carbon dioxide that's part of the carbon cycle of this planet. Can you see how sick that is? So that's why I talk more and more about the true threats to humanity. Hydrogen weapons, atomic weapons, antimatter weapons, cyclotrons, superconducting super colliders, open air genetic engineering. This is the true threat. What's the plan? It came out. It came out a year ago. And we told you beforehand that the flu shot was deadly, that it was genetically engineered. And it came out that, oh, the big five drug makers had released an H1N1 simulant into the population. And now we know that simulant carries genetic RNA of viruses to literally reprogram our DNA. It's not just the toxic waste, the mercury, the asbestos, the rest of it, but it's savaging and destroying human DNA. But it is the very viruses that they are loading our bodies full of as a weapon to dumb us down and to make us more servile and to make us sick so we're more easily controlled. And to answer that, that uh, question, I will be getting into their master plan, but you know what their master plan is. It is death, it is destruction, it is complete and total war against free humanity. That sucks. And <laughs> the globalists in their own writings over and over again, we cover this in my film Endgame, with their quotes and where they said it. They talk about irrevocably changing the human spirit. And they describe themselves as gods, but they're not gods. They're just humans on a power trip. And they talk about how they are changing our species. They talk about how they are changing who we are. And if, 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 if they were changing us for the better, that would still be wrong because they didn't ask us. And they're the ones making the decision whether they're changing us for the better. That's right. But what they, they admittedly are changing us for the worst. When they get on CBS News and say, Mercury, the feds have shown, actually helps children and their learning not hurts them. It makes, it, 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 it cognitively enhances us. That's their sick joke. For them, lowering our IQ, dumbing us down, is a cognitive enhancement. For them, lowering our, Q, our IQ is an enhancement because it's enhanced for them to make us more servile and more easily controlled. So the big issue at the end of the day is realizing evil, realizing it exists, learning how to recognize it. You know, we're taught that Mao and Stalin and Hitler and Pol Pot are evil, and they certainly were. But we're, we're taught to recognize evil as something from the past, black and white films. We don't see a creeping, slow death in control of our society at every level. And it's scary to realize this, but it's also empowering to know it. Because the greatest solution is knowing your enemy, as Sun Tzu said, and understanding what they're doing and knowing that they don't have your best intentions at heart. In fact, they want you dead so they can have the future for themselves and their children and their grandchildren. And once you know that, you know, you understand that it doesn't matter whether they kill you individually. It doesn't matter if your neighbor laughs at you. It doesn't matter what your boss or employees say. Because you have the truth, you have their own documents, you have their own reports, and you know who they are, and fundamentally, you understand that all of us individually will pass away. It's just like waiting for Christmas when you're a little kid. Pretty soon it comes. But once you're an adult, it's there all of a sudden. The years just speed by. All of us are going to die sooner rather than later, but we live on th through free humanity. And once you commit yourself to this species, once you love your fellow man and woman, once you understand these greater truths, once you understand the level that we're playing against and how high the stakes are, it doesn't 
matter anymore what they do to you individually because they cannot stop an idea whose time has come. Yeah. Nothing will stop it. Globalists have spun this incredible web of technological control. They have beguiled us. They have seduced us into using their iPhones and their computers. They are engineering a society where we are all 100% dependent on, on a system created by DARPA and the CIA more than 30 years ago. And it is a system of surveillance, of control, of as Google now admits, literally predicting the future by tracking your mass movements and your individual movements. Think about that. And more and more we now see them removing the freedoms that were once on the internet. We see them more and more talking about curtailing free speech because they've misjudged. They plan to use the World Wide Web as a worldwide wiretap. But now they understand that we, the individuals, have seized that system and are using it effectively against the globalists. Yeah! Woo! How many of you saw the 1010 Project TV commercial? Yeah. A joke. How many of you saw TV ads? run in England to school children, put in front of movies uh, in England. They tried to air them in the U.S. How many of you saw a teacher sitting there as, as this authority figure in front of her students saying, uh, who's going to make a cut in their carbon footprint? Oh, Jenny, you are. Bobby, you are. David, you are. Uh, Karen, you are. Oh, you five kids aren't going aren't gonna to make a carbon Cut, was she just attacks the globalist? No pressure. Yeah, yeah, she said, she said, there's no pressure. She said, you've made your decision. And then she hits a button, and they explode, and blood splatters all over the other children. And then they had another commercial in the same ad, we continued, where it shows a, a corporate manager, and he's standing up above him on the second floor, and all the employees are down there below, and he's the authority figure. And he says, um, how many of uh, you are going to make cuts in your carbon footprint? And most of them say they are. And he goes, that's good. It's your decision, but some don't. And he hits a red button and murders people. And then it shows a radio talk show host who won't make carbon cuts and a soccer team that won't make carbon cuts, and they have to be killed as well. And now the phony environmentalists, the people that don't care about genetic engineering or nuclear weapons, they come out and they say more and more, Yes, we are eco-fascists. We want to bring tyranny to save the earth. They're our saviors. We have to bow down before them. We have to go along with their agenda to artificially cut off our resources in the name of the environment. But my point is, if you go to Australia and you read ABC News in Australia, they teach children in the public schools, headline, children taught when to die, that when you're age 14, you should commit suicide. And then we wonder why there's record suicides. But don't worry, they've got serotonin reuptake inhibitors that admittedly, on the insert, increase suicide to treat your suicidal tendencies when you're taught as a fifth and sixth and seventh grader how to commit suicide. This is all out in the open. And what they're doing is they're turning off our survival instinct. They're teaching us that it's a good thing to want to die. They're teaching us that we're a pile of crap.